Good morning. It's Thursday, October 10th, and this is Slice of Wenatchee. We've got new episodes out on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, so make sure to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Today, we'll be exploring a new initiative making waves in Wenatchee, the Wenatchee Rescue Mission's Pallet Shelters. These tiny homes are part of an ongoing effort to provide shelter to some of the community's most vulnerable members, the chronically homeless. And later, Leavenworth's Oktoberfest is a three-weekend celebration of German heritage, drawing tourists from across the country. And this year's festivities are a sellout, with tickets for the second and third weekends already gone. Before we begin, have you joined Neighbor yet? If not, download the app today and join local conversations about issues that matter. Neighbor is a site just for our local community focused on facts, not misinformation. Best of all, it's free for everyone. To learn more, visit WenatcheeWorld.com slash N-A-B-U-R. Now our feature story. Imagine a field of tiny white homes, each one about 64 square feet, lined up like a miniature suburb, but surrounded by gravel instead of lawns. That's the scene at the Wenatchee Rescue Mission in South Wenatchee. This project, consisting of 43 small pallet shelters, opened in September and aims to provide a safe space for individuals in need. Currently, only 12 of these shelters are occupied as the rescue mission gradually phases in more residents. Scott Johnson, the executive director of the Wenatchee Rescue Mission, hopes that over time the number of occupants will grow. These shelters aren't just about offering a roof over people's heads, they're part of a broader goal by the city to provide more low-barrier housing options for those in need. Glenn DeVries, Wenatchee's community development director, explained that these pallet shelters are designed specifically for those who might struggle in traditional congregate care settings. The goal is to stabilize these individuals and eventually help them transition to permanent housing. Each pallet shelter is equipped with two beds, storage space beneath them, climate control, and small windows to let in natural light. There are also rules, plenty of them in fact. As Scott Johnson puts it, quote, low barrier doesn't mean no rules. Residents must sign off on almost two pages of rules, which are read to them before they move in. There's a 10 p.m. curfew, no visitors allowed inside the shelters, and security is present around the clock. Johnson and DeVries stress that these measures are in place to ensure safety for everyone involved. One interesting feature is that the site has a separate family unit designed for temporary use in emergency situations. This unit replaces the city's previous hotel voucher program and allows families to stay on a short-term basis. John likens the Wenatchee Rescue Mission to an emergency room for those experiencing homelessness, a catch-all space where people can be stabilized and connected to resources that help them move forward in life. He shares a story about an 86-year-old Vietnam veteran who had been homeless for 25 years. With the help of Coordinated Entry, a federally required program designed to connect people to local resources, the rescue mission was able to find him a place in a senior living facility in Kashmir. Stories like these, Johnson says, demonstrate the potential of the mission's efforts, even if the lack of affordable housing remains a challenge. But not everyone is convinced. Concerns have been raised in recent city council meetings about the rescue mission's approach, particularly regarding the two safe parks where people are allowed to live in RVs. Some worry that outside agencies have been sending homeless individuals to Wenatchee to take advantage of the available resources. Johnson and DeVries acknowledge that this has happened, but say they've addressed it with the responsible agencies. Despite these challenges, Johnson remains optimistic. He points to the reduction in street homelessness since the safe parks opened, noting that crime and theft reports from nearby businesses have also decreased. Quote, give us a chance to fail, he says, confident that these efforts are making a difference one person at a time. Next, this year's Oktoberfest in Leavenworth is shaping up to be a huge success, with tickets already sold out for the second and third weekends of October. Tourists from across the United States and even some from Bavaria are flocking to this Bavarian-themed town for three weekends of music, dancing, delicious food, and plenty of beer. The event features beer gardens, live music, stein-holding contests, and the ceremonial keg-tapping at Front Street Park. Attendees don traditional German garments, adding to the authentic Bavarian feel of the celebration. Bands like the Michael Fischer Band and S-Bahn keep everyone clapping, singing, and dancing late into the night. Oktoberfest in Leavenworth has been a beloved tradition since 1996, celebrating community, tradition, and joy. If you haven't been, maybe it's time to grab your Tyrolean hat and plan a trip for this year. Eins, zwei, drei, Prost! Thanks for listening. For more information on all the stories you heard today, visit us at WenatcheeWorld.com. The Wenatchee World has been engaging, informing, and inspiring North Central Washington communities since 1905. We encourage you to subscribe today to keep your heart and mind connected to what matters most in North Central Washington. 
Thank you for starting your morning with us, and don't forget to tune in again on Saturday.